Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I have an amazing low-key trick for you that will blow your mind and a lot of other secret sauce to turn this photo into that and then even this because we can and we want to have fun. Let's get started. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So here we are in Affinity Photo and of course we want to select our image layer and then go to Filter, Plugins, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro. And as always on the left side we have our filters, on the right side we have the filter settings. So the first thing we are going to choose here is Pro Contrast. It's one of my favorite filters because it works so well. So we're gonna go up here to correct the color cast, do some correct contrast and then also dynamic contrast to just bring out the value. So look at that. I push this up and I get some nice colors in here, especially here at these stone values. Let's put up the contrast a little bit and the dynamic contrast. Look at the water, what this is doing to the water. It's pretty amazing. Let's push up the contrast correction a bit more. You can see we're getting some really nice values now in the stones, also in the landscape. There we go. That already looks pretty good, but I want to do some more adjustments. And here comes the first secret sauce. Let's add the next filter. And what we want to do here is to do a graduate filter. This one here on the side, you can see graduate filter. Let's use that. And we want to choose here one of these warmer colors. Let's go to the orange tones. You can see that looks already pretty good. And I will put the opacity to 100% just so I see what I'm doing. We have your image that is split in half. So we have beach on the top and sea on the lower part of the image. So that means we will bring the vertical shift down until the beach hits the sea and then adjust the blend a little bit because of course we have a little bit of sand in the water too. So that's good enough. And now let's tune it back. So it's just warming up our coastline up here a little bit. They can see with the before and after, this just makes for a much nicer and warmer impression. And by the way, here is something that makes all of this a lot better. I have a weekly challenge that is a ton of fun. I linked it below the video. Join it in my Facebook group and you will even get live feedback from me in my live stream every Sunday. And of course, the live stream is where the magic happens, where I share tons of secret sauce. You can ask me questions. It's always a great time. See you on Sundays. Okay, let's go to the low key filter that I want to show you here because when you look at the picture, you can see that the beach still is rather bright and has not too much detail. So let's find our low key filter. It's over here. You can see this one low key. Let's click it to add that filter and this is too dark. I don't want that. So of course, also, I don't want to have any glow that we have here. So let's tune that down. And then we have the standard low key and the dynamic low key. That is actually the important part here. So let's tune down the standard low key and pull up the dynamic low key. And you can see that this will bring these brighter values from our beach into a middle range where we have nice details in there. Also, you have an adjustment for the whites that you can use here. Let's bring this down a little bit. And then we have the contrast here. We can actually leave that up. That already looks amazing. But what I want to do at the end, it's always a good trick is to go back to the filters before and fine adjust them a little bit more. So let's reduce here the opacity a little bit in the pro contrast, maybe bring the color cast a little bit back. Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And now look at this hour before hour after it's just magical. Okay, let's go back into Affinity Photo for that tilt shift effect. To create the tilt shift in Affinity Photo is actually super easy. You need to go down here to the live filters and then choose depth of field. So let's click on that. And when we have that filter open, you see it has mode choice for elliptical. This is the classic depth of field, but then also we have tilt shift. And this is what we want because what tilt shift does is that it has the sharpness and the blur in a line as a stripe across the image. So this 
middle handle here, that middle blue point, this is where the image is the sharpest. And then you have two blue points on the inside and two blue points on the outside. So the outer one, this is where the blur reaches its maximum level and the inner one, this is where the blur starts. So with that, you can actually adjust exactly how big the blur area will be and how fast the blur is fading. And this also depends a little bit on how the angle is of the ground that you want to apply this. In this case, we have a drone shot that is basically from the top, so we can leave it as it is. And now we simply adjust our radius here and of course, you can see up here, this is very important. You get these transparent lines. If you don't want to have that, and of course you don't, you go up here to preserve alpha and make a hook on that. And as you can see, now they are gone. So this is how easy that is. And this is also a non-destructive filter. So you can always go back to readjustments if you're not happy with the result. That's it for today. Leave a like if you enjoyed this tutorial and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. See you soon. Bye.